everybody, and thanks for inviting me. I'm very pleased to be here with you in this beautiful facility on this very dark, cold, windy day. This is a perfect day to talk about winter sewing because it's kind of wintry. Um, so, um, as Kathy said, I'm a, I'm a Lake County Master Gardener. I joined the group in 2010. And um, I'm having a blast with it. It's a great organization or group to join. If anybody's interested, we have a sign-up sheet up here, and we've already got somebody's name on here. Very exciting. It's a wonderful group, and I see a, a, um, a former, yep, sorry, you're, you're busted. One of our own is here. We're going to get her back in the fold, because this is a great organization. And... Um, I'd like to introduce Lori Roy back here. Lori is another master gardener. She's been with the group a really long time. How long? 14 years. 14 years. She knows a lot. So please feel free to ask Lori questions. She's an expert on roses. And she works, volunteers at Moreland Mansion, the gardens there, if you guys know those gardens. And she also runs the Peace Garden for the master gardeners, Lake County master gardeners at the fairgrounds. So very experienced and she can answer a lot of questions that I probably can't answer. So anyway, has anybody heard of winter sewing? You have, how? I did it. Last no way! Winter, but I just thought maybe I'd come and learn a little extra. I um, went online with the National Garden Association, um, garden.org. And I was swapping seeds last year. Wow. And uh, some of the gardeners online said, why don't you winter sow? So I looked up some articles and got some milk jugs from friends, like a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's awesome. That is awesome. I want to hear about your experience. That's, okay. that's really cool. OK, anybody else winter sowing? Ever heard the term? This is pretty hot right now. It's pretty popular. It's all over the internet and social media. So somebody over here asked me if I had a greenhouse. And I'm going to say that I do. And it's right here, right? Right. Miniature greenhouse. That's what this is about. So this is a method to sow your seeds and grow them using recycled jugs of many different kinds, but mostly milk jugs is kind of the traditional thing we think about. And it allows you to sow your seeds, number one, early in winter. See my tablecloth here, my nice wintry tablecloth? In winter, outside. So how many people start seeds indoors? Okay, so you know what you need the heat to have really good success especially up north this you need the heat mat lights you got to constantly go at least when i did it i was going to check them and water them at least three times a day all the time i couldn't travel i had this contraption set up i'd get damping off um, so this is a way to not have any of that i have not used my heat mats, my lamps, my fan, all that stuff that you really, to have good success, you really kind of need it. Okay, you're going to bypass all that stuff. Throw it all out. This is going to be Mother Nature <coughs> and you sowing your seeds and growing them up outdoors. So, <coughs> um, there is a disadvantage, and maybe she can attest to this, it's really addictive. It's really fun. <laughs> and you're going to get so many plants. A hundred. I mean, you're going to get so many plants that you're going to be giving them away. And who can attest to that? Do I give? Yes, you do. Beautiful arrangements um, every year. We belong to Menor Heisley Gym. And I'm constantly bringing in um, bouquets. Every single one of these was How winter sown. <laughs> Pardon me? I said I go to Heisley too, and I was always wondering who dropped in the pretty flowers. That would be me. I'm Meg. I'm there 9 o'clock in the morning. So, um, But not only do I make a lot of bouquets, 
but I give seedlings away by the hundreds um, every year and I bring a lot to the gym and I'll just leave them for people to take yes. so that's a disadvantage you get a lot of you get a lot of um, flowers so they're pretty aren't they Beautiful. so you can do perennials annuals vegetables and herbs you can do really anything in this um, jug so as far as when you can start I start my perennials they say you can start anytime after winter solstice and so really in December I could start my jugs but there's I don't need to start in that early what I do is um, I start seed catalog shopping all of January and I start my perennials in February I start my annuals depending on the annual uh, cool season annuals like alyssum things like that that can pansies I start in March the rest I start in April or May and what I do is I start them in my basement have my little setup start them and they immediately go outside onto my patio and they never come in again so I have all these jugs sitting on my patio in the snow and I probably have picked pictures up here of jugs covered with snow that's ideal that's what you want so let's talk about starting a jug getting it ready for sewing and I'm going to show you how easy it is I always use Swiss Miss green diet green tea containers I just love these <laughs> this is a perfect size traditionally you call it milk jug sewing that's what you'll see online mine is iced tea sewing but okay so we're all gardeners right so we know that we need moisture so here's my jug I empty it drink it all it takes me about a day to drink one of these so I generate a lot of these I have hundreds of them okay so I'm gonna start sewing so I start here okay okay step one this cap is history this cap you're never gonna use okay I throw that away so you see that you never touch it okay next step is you're gonna put holes in the bottom because we all know we need drainage right we're all gardeners I take an, an awl but you can use whatever you want a drill whatever and I just had bicep surgery two weeks ago and with my right arm which is very sore but you can see how easy that is to do put some holes in it I, I usually put about four and next I'm gonna cut around this jug and I'll show you even with bicep surgery how easy okay that's the surgery that's talking <laughs> this this is this is easier than it looks if you don't have surgery this is really very easy and for me it's even easier because I make my husband do it all <laughs> he loves to do I don't know why he loves to do this and cut it up all right so this is what your jug should look like notice I've left a hinge right hinge is important so I knew you can leave the hinge anywhere you want but I leave it where the handle is I don't know that just seems good and it's about about an inch whatever you need and then this is now ready for sewing so I'm gonna t I'm gonna give you a hint right now that is or a tip that is so important. Hi, Kathy. Um, someone from the OSU Extension. Oh, you are so gonna do zinia! Oh my gosh! No, you are gonna be zinia masters. Okay, so this is my most important tip for all of you to listen to. You're gonna use pre-moistened potting soil. I get a big old. Um, enamel pot, uh, 
what am I trying to say, bowl, big bowl, I put warm water in it and I put my potting mix in that <coughs> and I make this really wet, goopy thing. If it's too wet, I add a little more potting soil. Don't put your potting mix, you're going to use potting mix, right? You're not going to use garden soil. You're going to use any kind, you know, miracle Grow, whatever pro mix, whatever potting soil you're going to use. But do not put that in here dry and then try to water it. You, you, that's not going to work. Tom, you know Tom. I taught him this method last year. He's going to hate. Oh, I'm being filmed. Oh, my goodness. Um, <laughs> he's going to hear this. Okay. Tom did 30 jugs. He didn't keep them moist enough. He lost all of them. Oh. I'm telling you guys, and he really wanted to do this method. I'm going to get him to do it again. I'm telling you guys, it needs to be wet. The wetter, the better. Not, you know, dripping wet, but very, very heavily moist soil. Did you find that to be true? Yeah, I did learn some of that the hard way. I started with dry soil, then I watered, and then the seed. And some of my hundred didn't make it. Um, and when I read about it, it was ones that should have made it. Yeah. So it was my mistake. And sometimes it gets hot and <coughs> it gets yeah. kind of close, right? It dries out. And, and potting soil repels, if it gets completely dry, potting soil repels. It's hydrophobic. It repels and it's going to resist getting moisture on it. So you want this to be moist, moist, moist to start with, okay? Your seeds, when they begin to open and swell with the moisture, they need to stay open. If they close back up again, they're toast. So, um, so that's a tip. So you're going to get your you're going to make your mix of potting soil and then you're going to fill this up to you know a couple inches high here is a jug and you can see how much soil i have in here it's probably really maybe about two inches or so does that look like what you yeah did it settles a little bit I know. it settles a little bit but put it you know put a good healthy amount in there <coughs> and then you're going to sow your seeds and how many seeds you put in there is kind of up to you. I, for many years, put way too many seeds in there, and then they're difficult. The roots are going to tangle. So now I'm doing a much more controlled number. And you just, and it, it depends on the seed, too. It, you know, if you're doing sunflowers, it's going to go fast, and you're going to have big things. You don't want 25 in a jug. But depending on the seed, sow your seeds, maybe between, you know, 6 and 20. Last year, 2017, I tried ornamental cabbage. You know those beautiful ornamental cabbages? I put 40 seeds in. I got 40 plants in one <laughs> jug. I will never do that again because you have to separate those. Um, but I got great germination rate. But maybe on perennials, like lavender, maybe you want to sow rather heavily because perennials, you're not going to get that germination rate a lot of time. It, de it depends. Each seed is different. Use your gardening expertise. All of you guys are gardeners, so, you know, zinnias, you're going to get a lot. Zinnias and marigolds, you're going to get really good germination rate. So, um, you've got, it, it's starting to look like this. You've sowed your seeds, and I always spray them again and wet them down a little bit. Follow your seed packet on how deep to plant. You know, you're going to plant them exactly the way it says on the seed packet and based on how you know to sow that seed. You're going to do that, and then you're going to seal it back up duct tape or whatever kind of tape because we are creating a little greenhouse. Okay, I can't see where it starts because I don't have my reading glasses, but I would seal this back up all the way around, okay? So you're going to end up with only air and so forth being able to get in this way. 
after you've sealed it up, you want to make your label. And I have always used this Sharpie, you know, this regular Sharpie marker. I have really good success with that. Um, but a lot of people say they fade. And you can see this purple auric. It says purple auric is kind of fading. So what is in vogue now to use is a paint, paint pen. You ever seen these paint pens? These are pretty cool. You have to, oh, I can't shake with that hand. You have to shake them. And then to get it started, you have to push. Oh, OK. It's falling apart. Yeah, you have to push. Somebody knows. Somebody's used it. Yeah, you kind of push until a little bit comes out, and then it's good to go. And then be careful, because it's kind of messy. Um, and I can see that this is paint pen. This really did very, very well. This didn't fade at all. And this is the ultra fine. There are thicker ones. It doesn't matter what size you get. But you can see that really stayed on. It's not going to fade. So if you can get a paint pen, you can get them at Pat Catan's or Joanne or Michael's, wherever. Use that. Now, you can put whatever information you want on your container. Don't skip this part. You will not remember what they were. Uh, <laughs> trust me. You all know that. Um, I put the name of the plant and the variety. And I put the date. And I normally will label all my jugs starting at 1. And then I keep a journal. Did you keep a journal? I did. I, I keep a journal. This is from last year. And I think this is very important. I think the journal is very important. Just a one-page thing. Well, actually, last year I did two pages worth. So I, I label my, my jugs one and then I put what it is and then it's kind of fun I put over here the date that I sewed it so that's pretty cool I can look back and go oh I started my lettuce um, on you know April 1st or whatever and then I put the date they germinate and that's been kind of fun too and then I thought oh, I'll, I'll put down how many germinated so I can see my straw flower which is in here Somewhere. Oh, here he is. I got 14 of those in, the, in one jug. So that's pretty good. So it's, it's, it's really cool to see. I, I circle my germination rate down here. So it's just kind of fun to keep a journal. I think it's very important. I think you'll be happy the next year to see when you did things and so forth. OK, so your next step is to boot it out in the, the yard. Let's say it's February 21st and you've started um, lavender, which is right here. This is from this year, you guys. I started lavender probably in February, maybe March. And it bloomed this year. That's pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. And it's about this tall. Whoa. And it's lavender. Wow. It smells be beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Um, so, all right, so it's, it's February, and I take these jugs outside on my patio. Sunny location. Don't put it under eaves. Don't put it under um, a porch. You want this bad boy to get rain and snow in here. And you want them totally exposed to the elements and in the sun. So you put it in a nice spot. Now, do we have wind? here in Northeast Ohio. <laughs> okay, okay. So my very favorite thing to do is to put them in these milk crates. Love these things. I can get four jugs in a milk crate. If you can get a bunch of these, you can even sometimes find these at um, Salvation Army or Goodwill or whatever. Get a bunch of them. These are great. They're not going to blow away. Will this jug blow away if it's on my patio? Guaranteed. And it won't blow away 
until you've been tending it for four months. <laughs> and then May 1st, you're gonna have a storm and you'll find that jug in your neighbor's yard and you'll be totally heartbroken. I'm not kidding, these guys will be like your babies. It will break your heart when that one jug of lavender is gone that you've been watching since, you know, whenever. So please, please get these, these things. If you don't get that, I love these too. Um, I get these at like Dollar Tree or wherever, you, got, you, you see them. These are great, love them. What is great about this one? Right. Absolutely. <coughs> this one I took my awl and I just poked <coughs> right through, which absolutely smashed it. But it accomplished the same thing. This drains, but this drains too. So this is your very best thing to have because these only fit two. But I still like these. I wish they fit more. I still like these. Um, this only fits two. But these are kind of fun. I have them in my basement and I can carry them up a couple at a time um, for my basement to put outside. So I just march these outside. I put them in milk crates. If I don't, I can surround them by heavy flower pots or bricks or whatever, but that's kind of a, a pain. But these will blow. I'm guaranteeing these will be gone at some point. So make sure that you've got some method of um, corralling them. Okay. All right, so what you're going to do, you're going to have all these jugs on your patio or deck or whatever you're doing. It's February, now it's March, now it's April. And are you with me? Yes. You're checking <laughs> constantly. And your husbands, you see them out there going like this. And that's why when, when they're kind of all spread around, that's another reason I like to um, number mine. I put a big old one right up here because I check them in order. I check one, two, three. Otherwise, you'll forget, did I check that one? Did, and you're looking, you're just constantly, because they're all taped up, you're constantly looking. <laughs> you are gonna despair, right? Nothing's coming, it failed. They're all dead. If you're Tom, yes, they are all dead. But <laughs> if you're not Tom, one magic day, you'll be out there like this, and you'll go, John, John, come here. Is that, is that it will be, how big is it? that you'll see the first little teensy tiny little thing and you're not sure it'll take about three days and you'll go that it is that it got a sprout so exciting okay i think i have pictures of how teeny tiny they are they're so tiny you can't i mean you can't even you can't even see them but there will be a tiny little green thing somewhere in there. And once that happens, it, it just, they start rolling along. Do you soak your seed before you put it in there? No, ma'am. Okay. The, and you bring up a very good point. A huge advantage of this is how many people know that you have to stratify, scarify, forget all that. You're not going to nick seeds. You're not going to put them in your fridge. Mother Nature is going to do that. We are in such a great climate for this. Imagine if you're in Texas or Florida. They want your soul like crazy there. I see them on Facebook all the time. But it's tough for them. We need this cold period. So if you have a seed that you know needs to stratify, don't wait until May. <coughs> Zinnias you can start in May. But if you have a lot of your perennials, that need that cold time, put them out in February. Even as late as March, they'll, they will stratify from March um, without question. Yes, ma'am? What stratified me? They have to go through the freeze, thaw, freeze, thaw period to break open that coat and get the 
seeds going. So the cold stratification. Um, and we're blessed up here, right? I mean, we're like a giant refrigerator. Um, California, Texas, I mean, they're, they're starting to winter so like, I mean, the minute, like Christmas Day, they're out, because they have to take advantage of all that cold weather that they have. Um, we can be very lazy and do it in March or whatever. Um, so that's a huge advantage, and thank you for bringing that up. And where was I? All right, so um, you start sprouting. Now, this is a, an important concept. It's one thing when your seeds are not sprouted. It, if seeds are not sprouted, they need no care whatsoever. Once they are sprouted, if they're a warm, if they're a tender annual, something that likes warmth, like zinnias, tomatoes, basil, if they're sprouted and we have a frost, if they are sprouted, if you see green stuff and we have a frost, you're going to have to protect them. Um, if they are not <coughs> sprouted and, they're an, and they are a tender annual, if they are not sprouted, they're let, them, let it snow, let it frost on them, no problem. But once they sprout, you're now the gardener taking care of these plants. You can't be lazy anymore. Um, so when you have tender things that are sprouted and it's going to be very cold, and I'm very conservative, if it's 41 degrees or below, predicted, I throw a blanket over them. And it's just as easy as that. When I say protect your sprouts in the cold, that's it. Not a big deal. I have these huge Eddie Bauer um, uh, towels that are really, really, really heavy, and I just throw them over the whole thing. So I keep all my tender annuals together in one spot and my hardy perennials over in another spot. <coughs> and I'll just run out, look at the, the weather. Let's say it's late April or late May in Northeast Ohio, and it's gonna be 41, 42 degrees predicted. I will just run out and spend two seconds throwing towels over my tender annuals over here. So you're saying we only need to do that over the annuals? Over the, yes, and over the tender annuals. Perennials, um, somebody name a perennial. I keep saying lavender. What else we got? Foxglove. Yep, foxglove. Um, fox here is a um, coneflower. This is prairie splendor. I got it off Swallowtail Gardens, Bloom's first year. Perennial beautiful big blooms and it's not real tall. This thing is tough as nails. It's a perennial. I will never cover it. How do we know which annuals I consider most annuals tender um, for, for this purpose. Most of them will be and your veggies but you'll kind of know. Gardeners know. If you guys didn't garden, you wouldn't know. But broccoli, is, can broccoli take the cold? Yes. Yeah. Lettuce, can it take the cold? Spinach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, peas. Peas. The things that like the cold, they might be annuals, but they're not tender annuals. But I think you'll know. I, I think, Kathy, when you get there, you'll know um, what is a tender annual. How about tomatoes? They like warm or cold? Warm. warm. You're going to protect those. Basil. Um, Warm. What else? Uh, peppers. What about peppers. What about milkweed or butterfly weed? Could you start them off? Absolutely. And uh, I don't think I have. Oh, here's my butterfly weed. Oh my gosh, that 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 germinates like you wouldn't believe. Don't put too many jugs in, <laughs> and you will get the caterpillars, and you will get the butterflies. Go for it. Excellent point. Butterfly weed germinates like crazy. And very hardy. It's a, it's a perennial, right? Not going to protect it in frost. I am not going to protect that. 
Not going to protect lavender. Basil, yes. Um, your, all your zinnias are tender. They like the warmth, right? Um, Mexican sunflower. Winter sows beautifully. Sunflowers sow beautifully. I don't start those. I mean, they like the, the heat, right? I don't even start those till May. Um, and the reason I do sunflowers, because you're probably going, you can just direct sow sunflowers, right? Well, I like to do them in jugs because they're protected from varmints, yes. right? And I can get them this high and good strong stems. And then I can say, where do I want them? Rather than them kind of putting the seeds out and then they end up where they are, squirrels dig them and so forth. I love to do them in jugs. But I don't do them until like May. Oh, yes, sir. Okay. So like butterfly weed and milkweed? Early. So when? Yep. Those are perennials. And I um, sowed them February 4th. I did butterfly weed. So February 4th, butterfly weed, foxglove, penstemon, gaylardia, and I have a gaylardia in here somewhere. Um, globe thistle, echinacea, and shasta all on the 4th of February last year. And I got all, all of those plants. Um, if they were blooming now, I'd have them in the bouquet, but most of them are done blooming. Yes, ma'am. When did they germinate? I mean, just for... Okay, let's go with the Shasta Daisy. It was the very first thing I put in. They were beautiful. I didn't bring them. Um, planted them on this 4th of February, and they sprouted on April 12th. Wow. So it does take a really long time. Yes. Winter sowing. Some people I see on social media think that winter sowing little greenhouses speeds you up, and it doesn't. It puts you at the right time. It lets Mother Nature tell all these seeds when to sprout. So it's not going to be fast. And um, you're going to get fabulous, fabulous flowers. But your zinnias, if you want them for Memorial Day, you're not getting them. In fact, you're not getting them in June. You're going to get flowers, blossoms in July. They're going to go to November, but if you need your yard, you know, ready for a wedding June 10th, this is not, this is not going to produce that. These are going to go when Mother Nature tells it. That's, they sprout when Mother Nature says it's warm enough, the nights are warm enough, the days are long enough, I think I'm ready. And everyone is going to sprout on a different day, right? Yeah. Um, I, I did notice that, that um, maybe yours are sprouting later than people who go to the greenhouses and buy them, but then yours are lasting longer than the ones that people bought at the greenhouses. Right, so. right. Um, and they are hardened off for you already because they were born outside and grown outside. <coughs> so hardening off is automatically done for you, by the way. Okay, so let's get back to the process. When the days are getting really warm, and this is just going to be your gardening sense, you're going to let, and I'll tell you, for me, it's going to be late April. Let's just say late April. I don't, I don't know what you think. You are going to come along and cut this tape, and sometimes it's not till May, to be honest with you, and you're going to open this during the day and close it at night. You're not going to tape it ever again. So once that tape is, is busted through, and I just get a box cutter or, or actually scissors, just cut around, and that's what this hinge is for. I have forgotten to open jugs on 90 degree days, and I haven't killed one flower because of that. So I'm telling you, you can flip these open. Yes, you should be doing that at some point um, when you're getting close to planting out in, in May. You're going to start flipping these open, but if it's really hot, you better flip them open. But if you forget, 
they're going to be fine. Um, and then at night, and if it's going to be only 65 degrees, I might not even flip these closed at night. Are you, it's, they're going to survive. But if it's going to go down to 50 or whatever, I'll just, 50 or 40 or whatever, I'll just put the lids back on. And it'll just look like this. It'll just sit there like that. And then the next day, if it's another warm day, you flip them open. If it's not, you know, because it's May, and the next day is a high of 42, just leave them shut. Does, does that make sense? So, and that will help them also get further hardened off because now they're getting direct sun. So you do want to do that. So, your perennials, all your perennials, <coughs> foxglove, echinacea, shasta, whatever, you're never throwing blankets over. Are we, are we totally clear on that? So I have all my, my hardy stuff that I've started early. So when I put my jugs out, jug number one through whatever, 20, is going to be my early jugs. And as I keep putting jugs out, I'm going later and later. So you know that over here on this side is going to be my zinnias, my marigolds, my tomatoes, and things that are warm season lovers. So those are the ones I'm going to cover with sheets or sheets, blankets, whatever, if it's going to frost. And for me, again, I'm very conservative. If the weatherman says it's going to be 40, 41, I figure it's going to be 32 at my house and I cover. Everybody straight on that? Any? So you are, you are going to start turning into a hardworking gardener at that point. You've been lazy through February, March, April. Mother Nature's taking care of them. But late April, May, you're going to have to start tending these just as if you had brought them home from, you know, gales or whatever. You're going to start tending them. You're also going to start monitoring for water. You probably have not watered them one time in February, March, or April, right? Right. Late April, if we had a really warm, you know, you're going to be checking them. And you can tell by the weight, by the color, and also if there's no condensation. That's your first clue. If there's, like right now, there's no condensation on here, so you're not sure if they're wet or not, but picking it up, I can tell. And the color, they're very wet. Um, so you're going to start, when it's getting warm, you're going to start monitoring for water. Meg? Yes, Lori. You have, if you've sown something like peas in your jug, how would you know when to put them out into the ground? Do you have to measure the heat in the ground or what? For putting stuff out in the ground, um, I do as exactly the same as if I bought it at a nursery. Basically, this is your nursery. And you just figure out if it's time, if I would have brought it from Petites and put it in the, the ground now, I would <coughs> take it from my jug and put it in the ground. There is a whole nother um, method called no transplant winter sowing, which is an offshoot, is developed by the same person, NTWS, no transplant winter sowing, which is great for peas, like Lori says. And it's basically the same concept, but you take a, a, little, um, a little container like this or whatever, cut it off, plant your seed, turn this upside down, punch some holes in it, turn it upside down, and let it be a little cloche. Does everybody follow me? That's called, uh, okay, so you just have a little, I use those little drink, you know those little drink containers you buy at dollar store for punch or whatever, they're little clear things. Pretend this is it. I put my, my um, I do this for peas, snap peas. I, put, I grow them in big pots. I'll put my seed in there early, like April 1st, 
and I'll put this little cloche over it, a little clear thing. Does that make sense? Are you following me? And the, the formal term for that is no transplant winter sowing. Um, so that's another thing to get maybe your lettuce started, your peas and things, maybe a week to two weeks early. I mean, it's not going to it's not going to buy you three months, but it's going to buy you a little bit of time. And then in two or three weeks when they get going and it's warm enough, you just take that off. OK. All right. So your stuff is up and growing and it's April. You're now going to start transplanting them. And there's all different ways to do it. I take a spoon and I'll just dig it out like a, a brownie or something. Um, and then what I always do is I transplant it into a little pot and I'll label my little pot. And I do a, a I do these, I always put them in here so they muscle up a little bit because if I put that lettuce out in the ground, it's going to be gone, right? So I let it go into an intermediate pot and just treat it like you would treat anything, like you would buy from Lowe's or whatever. Um, you're going to water it. You're going to, you know, it's going to be the exact same thing as if you bought it at a nursery. Um, if you want, if you're having trouble, you can do the brownie method where you pop this whole thing out and then you slice it. You'll be amazed. Your roots, you can just beat them up, rip them. You won't lose a single thing. I've never lost anything because the roots were tangled. Did you have good success? I saw, I saw it a little bit too thickly on some things. So right. I did have to go through and, and separate. And I probably planted them too early in some cases, but they were <coughs> happier plants because they winter so right healthier yeah I rip those roots apart it's no problem at all um, but as she says if, if I had these really thickly sown this is purple auric um, it would be hard to get these apart so I try to give them a little bit of space and that's very easy I get a plastic spoon and I just scoop it out and pop it into a thing I have no problem I, I won't lose a single one of these And then from there, you just, somebody put a corn kernel in here the other day. And I don't know how that happened. It's a bad squirrel. Um, so as I say, I, I label every one of them as they come out. And then I'm giving them away by the hundreds. I take them to the gym. I plant up, I, I plant up three of my neighbor's mailbox beds. It's just <laughs> insane. You will be like a terrorist. People will <laughs> really? Um, it's so much fun. You'll be giving these away like crazy. Yes, ma'am? What kind of soil do you use in that next? In this one? Yeah. A, a potting soil. I'm not real picky. Um, yeah, just a, a, a soilless mix of some kind. All right. Any food? Any type of food do you feed them? Yes, you, that's a really good question. When you, at transplant time, you start fertilizing them. Liquid fertilizer, um, they are fine until then. These are all growing. I started these on September 11th for this class. I want, I, I may not use, actually, I've actually harvested off this already. Purple auric, do you guys know what purple auric is? No. It's a wonderful leafy green. It's an ancient thing that you know they know about in Europe and so forth, but we just don't know about here. Um, but you're starting to see it in seed catalogs. And there's green and there's purple. And I just thought it was so pretty. And so purple auric, O-R-A-C-H. This was my first year trying, and I saw it in um, Johnny's, I think, seed catalog. Mm -hmm. Real nice write-up. So you use it in salad? You use it in salad. There it's just don't. a leaf. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to try a little taste of it, you're welcome to. But it looks beautiful in salad. Cut it up. I cut it up like in ribbons or whatever. 
Um, delicious, and it's, you know, they say it's got all these nutrients and so forth. Um, okay, so I give those away, and they're wonderful. Um, lettuce, here's radishes. I normally wouldn't really do radishes in... They do very, very well, but I normally direct sow radishes. That's one thing because it's a root plant. I think it's just as easy to direct sow. But for demonstration purposes, I thought I would grow some for you. These were started on September 22nd, so you can see where they are now. So you can do this also in, in the fall, but, you know, how hot was it in September? Very yeah, so I, I didn't need these to be in jugs. I, I planted them like this for you guys and left the jugs open all the time. They, these had never been closed because it was 86, 89 degrees, what, two weeks ago? Um, but actually the last three nights, I've actually been closing these for the first time. Um, and then as far as transplanting into your intermediate thing, um, do that. They have to have at least two sets of leaves, but I normally wait later and I see on social media people who have things coming out the top of their jugs all the time. They're this tall. Well, what's the problem with that? It's like it's growth. Well, and, and now you've got all those roots to deal with. So I, I, w I don't even let them get this big normally. Although this is fine. No, actually I do. The zinnias grow really, really fast, and they're probably this size when I transplant them. Um, but this is a really prime size to be able to get those roots out of there and get them growing in your little pots. And then when they're a little more muscular and can survive the moles and voles and all the critters, then you pop them, in, um, pop them right in the ground. And that's a couple of weeks. I normally go a couple of weeks in these. And, and you're fertilizing. When they go into here, that's when you start fertilizing. That's when you're really going to see some growth. Okay, I think that I've covered most everything. Um, if anybody wants to take a look at this, this is two wonderful sites on Facebook. I'm just going to put this up here. Um, that uh, two groups on Facebook worldwide that cover winter sowing, thousands and thousands and thousands of members. And it's so interesting because a lot of the members are out of the Arctic Circle, down to Sydney, Australia. I see people from Belfast. It's so fascinating. You can follow these people. So if you want to take a picture with your phone or copy this down, these are two really, really good groups on Facebook. Um, I've got pictures up here. I've got these guys, and you can see zinnias are going to work for you, guaranteed. All of these guys are zinnias. This is a zinnia. This is one. They're all dif different sizes. These are called Edwardian. Um, no, this is Edwardian. This is jazzy. Um, straw flower, petunia. Petunias so winter so very, very well. Um, but you're not going to see blooms till August on petunias. So you really have to have some patience. Um, Mexican sunflowers, the bees will just cover them. They're this tall, and bees are just all over them. Uh, this is salvia, and this is lavender, and this is craspedia, this ball thing. And... Uh, this is gomfrina. Anybody grow gomfrina? These are excellent for a vase, and you see them at the gym. I always have gomfrina. <laughs> this one is strawberry fields, and this is carmine, and there are some, a few other colors. Um, <laughs> and I mean, look at that zinnia. Is that insane? And it's perfect for this time of year, fall, you're going to find zinnias will absolutely work for you, and you'll have tons of them. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you.
guys. Thank you all. I really appreciate it.